do you think President Trump and his administration present a risk of one form or another to Asia or to Australia? Sorry, Nick, I just missed so, that word. Do you think, or to what extent possibly even, do you think President Trump presents a risk to Asia or to Australia in its policies and its outlook? Well, he, well as American presidents go, he's obviously the wild joker in the pack. Right? We, we don't know really what, what, how, how, how he will conduct himself. Right? Um, but he's, he's, he's had a couple of reasonable ideas. One is that the US should have a better relationship with China. You know, and we'd all applaud that because the sort of lives we live in this country depends upon the US and China finding common cause in the Pacific. Right? So if, if there's peace in the Pacific, our lives are gonna be that much better. And the other idea he had was to have a better relationship with Russia. That great state that, was, that has essentially borne the brunt of West European militarism with Bonaparte, with Hitler, um, and now in a sort of standoff with the EU. Um, and so the great challenge for the Americans is to find a place for Russia in Europe. Not that they'll ever be part of the EU system, but to find a point of, of some sort of harmony and accommodation, which the Americans decided not to do by extending NATO in 1997, by, by biting off bits of the old Soviet Union, Hungary, Poland, the Czech Republic, the Baltic states all put into NATO. Uh, and of course, this produced amongst Russian nationalists a great reaction. In a sense, the Americans produced Putin, you know. Um, so he's, he's got that idea. So you certainly would not have got that idea out of the State Department, right? And I don't think you get the same idea about China out of the State Department. So maybe, he may, he may be the wild card, but maybe, maybe, that we make progress on these two big fronts. What about the forces that, that propelled Trump to the White House? Because I think there's often a fixation on Trump and his personality and his exuber you know, exuberance, shall we say. Uh, but under the, behind him, that sense of electoral fragmentation between, you know, the, and disenchantment with existing parties, not only in the US, it's, it's across um, liberal democracies, that sense of a hollowed out middle class that used to have a, a kind of pathway um, and certainly it's a constituency that this university believes is, is core to, to the well-being of a, of a liberal society. Uh, do you think that sense of an America that is being sort of left behind presents a profound challenge for the world? That's to say an America that, that, an, America feel, an America that feels like America first of the kind that Trump has articulated is a force that weakens Australia or weakens the liberal international order? Or is it just, as you said, is it something that that's just happening and we're just going to have to come to terms with it? Well, I, there is no doubt that globalisation hollowed America out. It hollowed Britain out. Uh, in some respects, it's, in our manufacturing, it's hollowed out, us out too. Yeah. Uh, in, in the international, in the international uh, division of labour, the great states in Asia with, with, with big populations, with globalisation and the abolition of tariffs, have been able to displace big sections of manufacturing industries in the, in the developed countries. You know, this is true. Um, but, but there's also been great employment in the service sectors of these economies like there has in, in this country, you know. I mean, the people who are on the assembly line in the car plants are now working in the financial industries or they're working in hospitality or they're working in health, you know. Uh, so what Trump did in the election was say, globalisation's hollowed us out. That Hillary Clinton, she believes in globalisation. She believes in free trade. I don't. You know, I, I'll stick up for you. You know, and, and you've got to remember, he won the three states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Iowa, I think it was. Ohio. Ohio. 
by less than one, eh? Ohio. Yeah. Ohio by less than 1%. Less than 1%. Hillary Clinton didn't even visit Wisconsin. The Democrats took their constituency cheaply. Now Hillary said, I'm pretty good. I've been here a long time and it's my turn. You know? and, and he said, food to all that, you've been robbed. I'll protect you. I'll make America great again. You were um, uh, uh, much, much earlier than anyone else I knew, I know, you were uh, talking about uh, Trump as a possible victor from, I don't know, July, August yeah. uh, last year. So I was surprised when Hillary Clinton lost, you weren't. Uh, yeah. What was it that you saw in Trump himself? Well, the, the enormous inner confidence. He was a, the enormous inner confidence. He's a momentum player. Uh, 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 basically, probably a narcissist, you know? <laughs> uh, uh, there's a bit of that in all of us. Um, uh, 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 but I haven't been gazing in any pools lately. Uh, uh, but, but, but nevertheless, nevertheless, you know, I thought he's going to scatter scatter those, Dem those Republican candidates, he threw them in the corner like rag dolls, you know? And I thought, that's what he's gonna do with you, Hillary. He's gonna throw you in the corner. Now, it turns out Hillary got the majority of the votes in the United States. But because of the Electoral College, a bit like our Senate, where we give 12 Senate seats to Victoria, but 12 also to Tasmania, I mean, almost everyone, every street corner down there has got a public job, <laughs> you know. Um, um, that, that distortion, that distortion in our Senate is similarly reflected in the Electoral College. Now, if you're a Democrat, and you, be, you know this and you've been doing it for years and Bill Clinton did it for years and everything else, then what you do is you shore up your, your base. But they, did, they didn't, the, the Hillary Clinton's problem is she didn't have a story. And Trump had a story. Now, I was telling someone the other day, they said, you know, the, the, the displacement, the displacement of people in factories in America, it's, it's happened 30 years ago. You know, Billy Joel wrote that song, Allentown, you know, how we're, how we're living here in Allentown, you know. <laughs> and, they're, and they're closing all the factories down. Out in Bethlehem, they're standing in line, filling out, sorry, filling out forms and standing in line. That was written in 1983. It was on then. And Trump, Trump's saying he's got the remedy now. Of course, there is no remedy. I mean, it's, it, this policy is a con, fundamentally. It's not going to work, you know. Uh, and the people in Iowa and Ohio will wake up at some point to the fact. But, but the point is, he might just induce a shift in growth and wealth of a kind they get some part of. And... and if, if, he, if he can kick that economy of his along by half a percent or one percent of GDP, you know, he'll get a second term. That's the point of it. 